Some people, like the delivery guy, will come in and he said, where's the house at, you know? <laughs> and then he drives around the corner and he says, oh, I've always thought I wanted to do this, you know? <laughs> Where does your container come back to, do you know? Right about here. And it's about this wide over to here, about, about here. Completely camouflaged from here. Yeah. Wow. I don't consider myself a prepper. I'm not trying to get away from people or anything. It just, the idea was a whole lot more about using the earth temperature control than it was about hiding, you know. <laughs> when I was a kid, we used to go up north of here, up Lake Shasta. There's a bunch of caves in the limestone there. In the hot summers, we'd go cave exploring because that was so cool inside the caves, you know. And I always remembered that, that if you could just get underground, it was cool, <laughs> even on a really hot day. Looks like they've done this before. The shipping container, there's tons of these containers sitting around just sitting there, you know, so why not use them? <laughs> I found the book in the library, <laughs> and uh, it seemed like a, it was all about um, bomb shelters, but um, why couldn't we make it just a living space? <laughs> and then we got a plan for a single 40-footer dug in. And we thought, well, let's take that idea and expand it a little bit, give ourselves 640 square feet. And so that's what we did. I think I would do three containers Yeah, next, next time, time I think we go just a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> As you can see, it looks like a walkout basement. We have a 6% grade here, and so it made it quite easy to get an excavator in here and just dig straight back and then set the, set the containers in and then bring the dirt back over the top. That was the technique that we used. We left the doors on the front if we've never used them, but maybe somebody would want to lock it up good. <clears throat> so we have a six foot sliding door there. Just come on in and you'll feel the immediate temperature difference. So it was 100. What you just stepped out of was probably about 104 by now. It started to cool down a little bit. And uh, I've got a thermometer in the back, and it's been staying 80 degrees all day. So um, wow. we have our living room there. And I did cut throughs so that the two 8 foot become 16 feet, and it gives a lot more spacious feeling to it. Since we're underground, we realized that light would be a commodity. <laughs> what we did was we have, these are solar tubes. It goes through the roof and it has a prism on it and then it's got real shiny interior so it makes sure and gathers all the light down. So we wanted to have these solar tubes to let as much light down. These are the high cube containers. So there's an extra 18 inches on these. So it gives you a lot more head space so it doesn't feel like it's pushing down on you so bad. And it also gives you room for cupboards and stuff as well. So. In order to be able to put sheetrock, because I didn't want to make holes in the walls, because that's another thing that can get rust started, is if you put a hole where you're going to get moisture. So what I decided was that that square bar is closed in itself. I could tap into that with L brackets, and then these these two by fours are just a little bit too wide to fit in here. So I would cut them down just a little bit, and then they fit snug in there, and they're, they're right even with the front of this. You see this is a wavy length here. So that allows you to go ahead and do a more or less regular kind of a wall, yeah. plus like cabinets, be able to have two befores up there to hang your cabinets on. Uh -huh. We wanted to kind of split things a little bit. As you see, we have 
we kind of had to do a, a regular walls to do cabinets and things, but we also left some of the metal, so there's a little bit of industrial look as well. And we had to be a little inventive, like, you know, to bring the gas down, we had, instead of bringing it up as a regular house, we have to bring it down, you know, so, and the water as well, but it comes in the back. We have like a nice, fairly nice um, pan pantry here. Now that was another thing that it, with these walls, it's hard because you have cement coming right down to the metal. So in order to make a hole, you would need a metal bit going into a, a, a mason bit. <laughs> and it doesn't work too good. We kind of had to come up with a unique way of doing our walls. And that was to make them an eighth of an inch longer than their measurement and then drive them into place <laughs> with a <the> sledgehammer. <laughs> These are held in place by friction, but then as I put the other wall to it, then they're screwed together. So they, so, and then they're screwed into the floor as well. And they're very solid, but it w requires a little bit of inventiveness, <laughs> so. Oh, so now this is a light? Is that's a solar, that's a solar tube. Solar tube, so that's, yeah. that, that's always on. I just turned this light on just to get a little more view in here. Oh, but, but yeah, the solar tube's brighter. <laughs> Another thing I did, whenever I did a cut through, I, I used these beams to support the weight so that if I was sacrificing any strength, by doing the cut, then I would hold up that strength by adding these beams in here, so. And we made this big enough that we could put a bed in there, but it's being used for surely sewing. And then the bedroom, we opened it up so that it's got the full 16 foot. And then it's got two solar tubes as well. And we used a larger one on this side. These ones just... Yeah, this one's got a lot of light. The second opening is a vent so that we can exchange air. So we're pulling the air down here, and then we're pushing it out from the front. So we can do a full exchange of air in a fairly short period of time. And that's important because outside it's about 25% humidity, inside here it's about 45%. And that's just because we're in here. And so you need to exchange that air fairly frequently. And you don't want to let things get too damp or that's going to be a major issue. Especially since you have metal containers, you don't want to get rust starting and stuff like that. So. Now another thing we did that's also combating moisture for the winter time is on the outside of these walls, we have four inches of polystyrene, styrofoam panels. Then we have 18 inches of drain gravel all the way up the walls, back, sides, and then we have six inches underneath with drain tiles. So any surface water that comes towards this will hit that gravel and immediately go down. So we don't let water get in on top or on the sides of this. And that we felt was another important thing of keeping the metal dry so we don't get rust. Corton steel is what they make these containers out of. Corton is resistant to rust already, but you still want to protect it. Even structurally, were you worried? I mean, this is a big cutout here. Right. Yeah. Here's the thing is with a container, the corner posts are what's made for to hold the strength. If you see a ship, and they're designed so that they stack, and so corner post meets corner post, so that's going all the way up. So. What you want to do is you want to carry the weight of the dirt to the corner post. And so what we did was we made a six inch slab on top of the container. And the slab has half inch rebar at one foot grid all the way through it. So it's a very strong slab. And so what that's doing is carrying all of the weight to those corner posts. So when we brought the weight, the dirt back over, we have at least three feet in the front and then it goes deeper towards the back. We had the tractor on, you know, Caterpillar shoving the dirt around. So there's been a tractor driving on the roof of this, you know, and so that's how strong it is. That's the book. That... So you decided to write a book. Well, I just had so many people asking about how this came about, what, how we did it. This is how we laid it out for the slab on top. By having that slab, essentially what you have is, if you can just imagine like a table with the legs, and the legs are the only strength of the table. The table is strong because it's putting that wood out to those, you know, so essentially that's what we have going on here.
So this would be one of the... Right. Yeah, this is a corner, and then that's behind in the closet. It's the oh, other side. Oh, so you can see the corner post okay. right there. So. Oh, I see. so it's it's really a different piece. Yeah, it's a full, totally different. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a hollow square, okay. and you, you also you'll see along the edge there too. That's a square beam as well. And so mm -hmm. this metal is welded all along there into each other and on the bottom. And then you've got this part here is metal. But as soon as it turns into wood, that's inch and a quarter mahogany plywood. And then it's got tar on the bottom. So these things are made to take all of that abuse. You know, there have been ship uh, wrecks, and they have found years later, these containers still floating on the ocean. And they seal up the air, and uh, so they act like a boat themselves, you know. So these containers, the whole idea of the container cargo was, you know, it's been developed pretty highly over the years. So using these containers, you're really gaining the benefit of all of that engineering and... Most of the time you think of having all of your utilities come in underneath, but since we're underground, we bring our utilities in the top, <laughs> so... That's the main shutoff for the water. The electricity is going in there as well, and the gas is going in there. It's uh, propane, and we just use these 90-pound bottles so that we can look, put them in the trunk and go get them more. And because you have to be permitted to get the big tank anyway, so that's just the way it is. <laughs> we asked the county if we needed to have a permit to put this in here, and they said at this point when we asked them, they didn't have a permit for bearing containers. So we said, fine, that's all we need to know. So. <laughs> They have been out and inspected us since we have been in place and living here and no problems, but we do not technically have a single family permitted dwelling here. We have a permitted septic system, we have a permitted well. Everything is up to snuff as far as that goes. It's just this is such a non-conforming type of building that they really didn't know what to do with us. <laughs> Here's another thing, your savings, this is about $30,000 to get it to this level. And that includes the solar panels and stuff too. So if you take 640 square feet, you're just a little under $50 a square foot, which isn't great, but that's just the beginning of where your savings are because we haven't had a utility bill for since 2002. Obviously we're not running an air conditioner, That's those are big energy hogs. And then in the winter, we just have this little, it's a little RV catalytic heater is the only heater we have in here. That's all you need in here. It's just a, just this much heat. And, and tiny. Because it's so tiny down here? Because yeah, because the, 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 even if the heater's not on, it doesn't get below 62 degrees in here in, in the coldest day of the winter. The earth has a tendency to not change much at all. It's the same thing that's keeping us cool in the summer keeps us warm in the winter. It's that thermal mass. And so you're getting the benefit both in the winter and the summer on opposite ends of the temperature scale. Do you think more people should do it? Oh, I think, I think it's a great idea. To me, it just makes a whole lot of sense. So, you know, there's whole cities in Turkey that are underground. So, you know, there's a few people that are understanding the benefits. <laughs> you just let the earth do the work. <laughs>